Betty, has my passage to London arrived yet? Yes, here it is. The ship sails Monday. How's Margie taking the news that she's going to be left home this trip? She's tried every trick known to the devious female mind. But I'm holding the line. She's staying right here in New York. That's kind of a shame. Then I guess a business trip is a business trip. This time it's more than that. It's a rescue mission. I must save the account of the new Earl of Westbrook for good old Honeywell and Todd. New Earl? Brand new. In fact, he's on a world cruise right now. They had to cable him the news that he'd come into the title in the estates. And I'll be waiting for him in London to renew our contract. And without Margie. No wonder she's so anxious to go along. Any girl would love to meet one of those romantic British noblemen. Oh, I don't know how romantic he is. I've never met the man. All I know is that he's a Canadian. <laughs> Dad, it's happened. It's happened at last. Uh, but what's happened? The most wonderful thing in a girl's life. I'm in love. At long last, I found the right man for me. We'll wait until you get back from London for the wedding. That's the only fair thing to do. Oh, Dad, he's got the most fascinating twinkle in his eyes. Twinkle? Now, see here, Margie, can't I leave you alone for a minute without you losing your head over some young idiot? Oh, oh, I get it. Congratulations. I almost fell for it. Fell for what? This final pitch to make the trip with me. I'm supposed to play the frantic father taking his lovesick daughter to London so that she can forget the wretch who stole her innocent heart. Oh, brother, was that corny. I'll ignore that crack because I don't want to go to London now. Do you think for a moment I'd leave New York after what's happened? Nothing's happened, baby. This morning at breakfast, you were fancy-free. And just four hours and 27 minutes later, you come up with this grand amour. <laughs> this is a track record, even for you. Well, a woman's heart doesn't work for the clock. It was love at first sight. Oh, Margie, cut it out. I've got enough to do without wasting time on your wild yarns. But feel free to drop in any time you get another bright idea. I'll be seeing you. Well, I'm with you, Margie. Fathers simply don't understand love at first sight. Got a scoop for you. Dad's on the ball for once. I made the whole thing up, but not good. Gee, that's too bad. Well, what now? If I could find someone who'd go along with a gag, yeah, that'd really convince Dad. Margie, you never give up, do you? Well, certainly not when there's a chance of meeting a real Earl. I've never met an Earl before. Keep your fingers crossed. Radiogram for the Earl of Westbrook. Radiogram for the Earl of Westbrook. Radio... Oh, well, here's to it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Stanley. This is for the Earl of Westbrook. Whoever he is. Well, that's me, Joseph. You, Mr. Stanley? It's all new to me, too. As a matter of fact, I came into the title while we're going through the Panama Canal. Well, love a duck, so you're a blinking Earl. Uh, no offense, you won't, you? <laughs> Let's keep it plain, Mr. Stanley. Huh? No sense creating a lot of excitement on board, okay? Watch you are, sir. How long before we sail? Not till midnight, sir. You going ashore for a fling at the bright lights? No, worse luck, simply business. It's to meet this man Albright in London. Now it seems the family solicitor wants me to contact him while we're docked to New York. Might as well get it over with. Well, if you get a free moment, sir, give my regards to Broadway. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not having any luck casting the part of my phantom lover. I guess there's nothing left to do but put in a last-minute wheedle session with Dad. I wouldn't right now, Martha. Your father's busy going over the contract for the Earl. Some of my friends must know a handsome, tight man with a fascinating twinkle who'd help a gal out. I'm going to give it one more try. London or bust? Good hunting. <laughs> For. Will you help me get to London? I've just got to get there. Well, I don't believe I have that much money with me. Oh, no, no, I don't mean that. 
I mean, all you have to do is tell my father you're madly in love with me, and then he'll snatch me away from you and take me to London to get over my crush on you, and I'll be grateful forever. Oh, please, you look like the type who'd help a lady in distress get to London. Well, I must say, you would add a touch of beauty to the old town, but... Uh... Oh, you're a darling. I knew you'd help me out. Now, you let me do most of the talking and just act lovesick while Dad blows all his fatherly fuses. Well, just a minute. I didn't agree to face an irate father. Oh, he won't hurt you. When the going gets too rough, you can beat it. I'll give you the high sign. I have a feeling that no one's going to have to tell me when the going gets rough. <laughs> well, Betty, I've got it made. You sure have. Now, I'll flip the office intercom open, and Dad will hear the story of my love life. Uh, do you suppose it'd be better if I don't know what's going on before it's too late? <laughs> now, don't be shy, dearest. I brought you here to meet my father because I want him to get to know you and love you as I do. What's your name? Uh, Tony. After all, Tony, dear, it's only fair to ask my father for his blessing on our marriage. <laughs> Tony, stop! Betty here. <laughs> Nothing is going to stand in our way, darling. If my father refuses his blessing, then we'll elope. Elope? Now, don't you worry. I know you haven't any money or even a job, but my father's loaded. He can support us for the rest of the year. <laughs> Tony was here. I'm sorry, but I guess the intercom was open in Mr. Albright's office. Mr. Albright? Not Vernon Albright. You know very well it's Vernon Albright. <laughs> you probably looked up my financial rating before you proposed to Margie. Oh, now, just a moment, sir. I think I owe you an explanation. You can't explain your way out of this, but I'll explain something to you. If you speak to my daughter again ever, I'll beat you to a pulp with my bare hands. How dare you strike my fiance? I warn you, Dad, if Tony leaves this room, I'm leaving with him forever. You're not leaving my sight for a minute, young lady. I think this is the spot we had in mind for me to exit. If you want to make it under your own steam, you'd better. Mr. Albright, the next time we meet, I'm sure you'll feel differently about me. In fact, I guarantee it. You're not going any place with that fortune hunter. You're going to London with me. But, Dad, I don't want to go. Cancel my ticket on the boat Monday and see if there's a boat leaving immediately. Passage for two, Mr. Albright? Of course. Margie is never going to see that character again if I have anything to do with it. Oh. Get us on the first boat out of here. Oh, Dad, you don't know what you're doing to me. You're destroying my life. I know one thing I'm doing. I'm keeping my eye on you until the boat leaves the dock. <laughs> Chairs are over here, Mr. Albright, sir. <laughs> Does he think he owns the whole deck? Hello, him. He's been exercising like a ruddy athlete ever since he got on board at Hong Kong. Better keep a sharp eye out for him, sir. Tours the deck at all hours. Uh, there you are, Miss. Uh, snug as you please. I'll be back in half a minute with a spot of tea. He won't warm that terrible cold emptiness inside. <laughs> Nothing will. Oh, Margie, cut it out. You'll be over this silly infatuation by the time we reach London. You just don't understand. I understand one thing. Your would-be Romeo. I knew he was a worthless fortune hunter over the minute I laid eyes on him. You also listened in over your intercom. I didn't have to listen in. I can tell what a man is made of after one look at him. That's why I'm a successful businessman. I'm an excellent judge of character. But you might have made a mistake about Tony. I mean, it's just barely possible. I never make a mistake in a person's character. I can read them like a book. Now, take that woman over there. I can tell you what she's like at a glance. She's spoiled, vain, probably henpecks her poor husband. Dash it, old man. Must you go barging about the deck all day like a ruddy wild bull? Me? <laughs> I, I, I was standing. 
in here minding my own business. Anything about same thing, loafing, getting in normal people's way. Why don't you try a spot of exercise, man, instead of hanging about with a pretty young girl? Well, now, now you listen oh, here, Sheriff. Careful, like you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Take exercise, man. Put your mind off the ladies. Healthy mind and a healthy body and all that. Bloody scrounger. Recognize the type in a pea soup talk. How about a little exercise, Dad? Healthy mind and a healthy body and all that. I'm in no mood for exercise. Well, I'm going to change into something sporty. See you later. Excuse me, sir. Is the chair occupied? Yes, not. Help yourself. You get out of that chair. I'll get sick immediately. Uh, Mr. Albright, what are you doing here? I'm taking Margie away from you. That's what I'm doing. Oh, then Margie's aboard, too. As if you didn't know, you cheap crook. You followed her onto this ship, but it's not going to do you any good. If you so much as speak to her, I'm going to lock her in her cabin and have the captain lock you in the brig. Now, see here, Mr. Albright, you're making a big mistake. If you'll just give me a chance to explain who I am... I know who you are, and it's no mistake. I never make a mistake when it comes to judging a man's character. Do you hear? Never. Who should see you, Mr. Albright? Oh, I see you met Mr. Albright, your lordship. Uh, no tea for me, Joseph. I think I'll go for a stroll. You know, sir, one of these days, you're going to lose your confidence in your talent for judging character. Fortune hunter, trying to brazen it out. Who, oh, him? Oh, no, Governor. Not his lordship. I mean, uh, Mr. Stanley. Don't tell me I know. He's trying to marry my daughter for her money. Followed us on the ship. Have you got any information about him? I'll be happy to pay you if you have. Well, now, sir, I, I don't know too much about Mr. Stanley. But if the governor insists upon rewarding me handsomely, I might run down a spicy bit of gossip. Oh, no time for that. We've got to create something to turn Margie against him. I'll make up a story uh, based on things I know about him, of course. And uh, you can help me. You mean ignore my personal ethics, as it were? Like I always say, anything up to $20 involves ethics. Above that, strictly business. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like someone we know is headed for a fall. Steady on, sir. Clumsy oaf. Now, in the more this interference, sir, and I shall report you to the captain. You were saying, Governor? Tony! Hello, Margie. I've been looking for you. But, but what on earth are you doing here? Still trying to marry you for your money, according to your father. Does he know you're on board? Barely escaped with my life. Now, look, Margie, if we're going to have any fun on this, yeah, I think you better tell you. Do this father. up right, and there's a bonus in it for you. Right, Governor. So you're defying me, huh? I warned you that if you tried to see Margie, I'd lock her in her cabin for the rest of the voyage. Hey, Dad, wait. This thing has gone far enough. You keep out of this. Now, you get out of here before I tear you apart. Mr. Albright, before long, you're going to get an awful shock where it apparently hurt you the most. In your bank account. He's right, Dad. You're going to be one embarrassed hombre when I tell you the truth about Tommy. You don't have to tell me anything. I guess I know a worthless character when I see one. Excuse me, Mr. Albright. Did that Stanley bloke swindle you, too? Swindle me? What do you mean, steward? Well, I thought maybe he cheated you at cards. He's a notorious card shark, he is. Card shark? That's right, miss. He works at transatlantic liners, preying on innocent passengers. Well, if he's a known card shark, why don't they arrest him? Well, sir, so long as you don't lure any of the other passengers into the game, it's okay. But the minute he brings out a pack of his own marked cards, in the irons he goes. Oh, thank you for warning me, steward. Well, that's all right. I just done my duty, governor. That's what I get paid for. Well, then, Margie, what do you think of me now as a judge of character? Well, I certainly won't see any more of Mr. Tony Stanley on this trip, I promise you. All right, I just done my duty, Governor. That's what I get paid for. Well, then, Margie, what do you think of me now as a judge of character? Well, I certainly won't see any more of Mr. Tony Stanley on this trip, I promise you. Did you tell your father the truth about me? Oh, Stuart, just a minute. Don't you want that bonus? 
That yarn that you told my daughter about Mr. Stanley was a work of art. Poor oh, Mr. Stanley. If he ever finds out, I'll lose my blinking job. Oh, don't worry. I'll never tell him. And Margie is so mad at him that she won't even speak to him. <laughs> Tony. No, no, now, wait a minute. Before you start slugging... I'm sorry about that, Tony, and I apologize. But it was all Dad's fault. He framed you with the steward. I just overheard him paying off. Oh, then I'm back in your good graces, eh? You sure are. But Dad isn't. If I let him get away with this, he'll misjudge every man I meet. You know how a father is. No man is good enough for his daughter. The present man accepted, of course. Tony Stanley's the only man on board I'd vouch for personally. That reminds me, Tony. Just what are you doing on this boat, anyway? I'm on my way to London to meet a man on business. So is Dad. He's got some deal on with the Earl of Westbrook, whoever he is. I wonder what your father would say if he found out the Earl of Westbrook is right here on this ship. Tony, that's a wonderful gag. Gag? Well, don't you get it? We'll send him a phony radiogram from Honeywell and Todd, at that Dad's firm, you know, and say that the Earl of Westbrook is on this boat. That would give him a jolt, wouldn't it? It sure would. And then when Dad falls for the phony Earl, we'll pull the rug out from under him and he'll fall flat on his character judgment. <laughs> if there really were an Earl of Westbrook aboard, he'd be on the passenger list and Dad would look there first thing. Uh, suppose he was traveling incognito. I understand they sometimes do. Tony, you're positively brilliant. Now, let's see. We can bribe that steward to deliver the radiogram. He'd do anything for money. It, but who will we get for the phony Earl? The Earl of Westbrook? Come on, let's go find that steward. Radiogram for Mr. Vernon Albright. Radiogram for Mr. Vernon oh. Albright. Oh, there you are, sir. Hot off the wireless. Holy jumping codfish. The Earl of Westbrook is aboard this ship. You don't say. I've got to meet him. I've got a big deal on with him. This radiogram says he's traveling incognito. Now, what's a little incognito to a man with your keen eye for character, Governor? <laughs> huh? Of course, I could drop the ink. Or maybe a clue. But then there's my personal ethics to consider. Now, uh, which one of the passengers is the Earl? Have I met him? Well, I might say you bumped into him, uh, in a manner of speaking, that is. Now, stop being coy and tell me which one is the Earl. Now, first, I must warn you, Governor. His Lordship's a very hot-tempered individual. <laughs> this must be handled most delicate-like. All right, all right, I'll be delicate. Well, I mean to say, Governor, you just can't go barging up and say, Hello, Earl, how's tricks, old boy? Make him like you first. Then wait till he confides in you. Okay, I'll make him my bosom pal. Now, please tell me who he is. Steady on, sir. I get so you're beginning to offend me. <laughs> no, I've had enough. I'm going to blast that big lot bucket. I wouldn't if I was you, Governor. That's his lordship, the Earl of Westbrook. The Earl? <laughs> oh, wait for me, old fellow. Wait for your little old chum, Vern Albright. <laughs> That's it all, man. Keep up the pace. Where are you? Uh, here I am, right behind you. You're not getting it all right. You've got to raise your knees up, old boy. Hi, hi. And then drive, drive, drive. Uh, uh, yes, sir. It's awfully nice of you to take all this trouble with me, uh, your lordship. Will you stop calling me your lordship? Now, my name is plain old Finchley Ball. Ebbe, hyphen, ebbe. Oh, yes, sir. I understand your, your passion for privacy, sir. Party. All you Americans are completely party. turn around the deck, Dad. Oh, don't even say that word. For the last three days, I've covered every inch of that blasted deck two times an hour at full trot. Oh, that Earl is a maniac. Giving you a rough time, huh? Oh, it would be almost worth losing the Earl's account just to take one good sock at his big fat nose. Oh, oh that must be the steward with the liniment for my aching back. 
There's the body over there, coroner. Boy, it's got another roll over. How's that feel, Governor? Oh, all right, I guess. I can't feel anything anyway. Oh, I'd give anything if I didn't have to go through any more athletics with that Earl. You would? Money's no object, eh? But it just so happens I might be able to solve your problem for you. I wasn't afraid of my conscience bothering me. Hmm. If your conscience doesn't cost any more than your ethics, <laughs> you've got a deal. All right, Governor, here it is. Now, brace yourself. The athletic gentleman ain't the Earl at all. What? But you said... But your daughter told me to, sir. It was Earl what sent the radiogram. Said it was a sort of a joke-like. Something about uh, proving that you ain't the judge of character that you think you are. Oh, so that's it. Margie again, eh? She built me up with a fake girl just so that she could... Oh, you wait like get my hands on that girl. But, Governor, for another fiver, I could give you the real lowdown on that Tony Stanley fella. I know enough about him already. But, Governor, only a fiver to find out Mr. Stanley's big secret. Well, let him keep it. Oh, boy, am I gonna fix that Margie this time? One thing I like about her little plot, Margie, Keeps your father busy and leaves your evenings free for me. It's been nice, Tony. But it'll all be over in the morning when we dock in good old Southampton. Well, there's London waiting. Maybe it's just the beginning. Uh-oh. See you later. Hi, Dad. I thought you were a stretcher case. Well, a funeral case is more like it. I just ruined the deal with the Earl. I couldn't stand it any longer. I lost my head and I knocked him cold. You didn't. Well, I guess there's just one way out now, Margie. I want to remember I love you no matter what happens. Dad, what are you talking about? The silent sea. Many a man's troubles are buried beneath those cold, pitiless waters. Goodbye, Margie. <laughs> What's the matter with him? Poor thing, he's crushed. I think we'd better let him off the hook right away. I know how to cheer him up. You too, Margie. You see, I'm really the Earl of Westbrook. You? Oh, now stop. I thought I might have a tough time convincing you, so I carried the proof right with me. Here's a radiogram from London asking me to contact your father in New York. Wow! I must have a lucky angel camped on my shoulder. Come on, let's tell Dad before he does something foolish. Dad? Where are you, Dad? Oh, here's a note. Dear Margie, this is the only way out. I hope you'll forgive me and remember me kindly as your future is provided for by ample insurance. You'll find the policies in my... Insurance! Oh, Tony! Now, take it easy, Margie. Your father isn't a <laughs> terrible thing. I mean, he wouldn't do anything as drastic as that. No, of course he wouldn't. Well, not about a silly little thing like, like losing a contract. But he was talking kind of funny about the cold sea and, and burying troubles Man forever. Overboard. Man overboard! Man overboard! Dad! You know what to do. Did you see him? Is it my father? I'm afraid so, miss. He jumped clean over the blooming rail before I could stop him. Oh, don't you stand there. Get a life preserver. Don't worry, Margie. I'll save him. on you and that Tony character. <laughs> you think so, huh? Well, for your information, that Tony character down there in the water is the real Earl of Westbrook. <laughs> no. oh, oh, you must be kidding. Say you're only kidding. You're only kidding, aren't you? Say you're only kidding. She's right, Governor. Mr. Stanley's the Earl. That's what I was trying to tell you for the extra fiver. <laughs> Tread water, your lordship. I'll save you. Your friend Albright is coming. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dad, if Tony could forgive you after all those horrible things you did to him, surely you're not going to be mad at me about a little dip in the ocean. Besides, everything turned out swell. What do you mean, swell? He hasn't signed that contract yet. 
Oh, I guess I forgot to tell you. He signed it last night. But, 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 but look, he made it out to you, not me. That's right. But if you and Mr. Honeywell are real nice to me, well, we'll see. Well, that's my little Margie. <laughs> <laughs> 